Welcome to the AeroGS channel. I'm your host, Corey Bartolotti. In today's video, we're gonna be going over drain basins and everybody's favorite, the $15 speedy catch basin. I'm gonna give you my opinion on all of this in front of me and what I have seen out in the field. So let me go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by talking about the $15 catch basin, also known as the speedy basin. Now they make two different types of this basin. They make one with just one hub on one side that you can use at the start of your run. And they make another one also called an inline basin that has two hubs, one on the left, one on the right for your inlet and your discharge pipe. Now these basins are pretty small. And if you need to bring this basin to grade, say you have to go deeper, you can use a piece of six inch SDR 35 pipe to act as a riser and that slides right into the top of the basin and that will accept a six inch grate and the six inch grate will just slide right on that SDR 35 pipe and that's how you can bring it to grade once you are going deeper and deeper in your soil. All right, so the way the pipe connects into these speedy basins on these hubs is you have an inner piece of plastic and an outer piece of plastic and essentially the pipe just gets sandwiched in between the two and makes a snug fit. Now these hubs can accept Schedule 40, Schedule 20, SDR 35, and of course, corrugated pipe. So let's go ahead and let's stick a piece of SDR in there. So it fits snug in there, but remember, these are two different types of plastic, meaning you cannot solvent weld PVC to this basin. You are going to have to use tile tape around these and you're gonna to wanna to use tile tape around these because roots will find their way in at this joint. That is going to be a weak spot. So that's your SDR 35. Let's go ahead and let's try your Schedule 20 PVC. Now Schedule 20 PVC fits in there, but it's a lot more loose than that SDR 35, as you can see. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to tile tape that up very well if you use Schedule 20 in your system. Now we have Schedule 40 cellular core, but it's still 40 gauge. So let's go ahead and test that. Now that's a really snug fit right there, but same thing, you're gonna to wanna to have to tile tape that up. And of course, we have the classic big box store corrugated black pipe that fits right in there, a lot of play. So make sure you tile tape these up. Now, when these systems fail and we rip them out of the ground, the roots are always growing in here. And that is usually how the roots are entering these systems. And they are never tile taped up when we find them. Once in a while, we'll see them with duct tape on them, but duct tape is not the same as tile tape. Tile tape is PVC. It's stretchy. It lasts in the ground forever. Duct tape deteriorates. Duct tape does not hold up against water, moisture, the earth. It just does not hold up. So do not use duct tape on drainage systems. Now, let me show you an example. This inline basin right here, we actually ripped this one out of an existing system. This is where the sticker was on this piece of plastic. You can see all the small roots that were growing between the sticker and the plastic. That's how fine these roots are. They find their way into any little crevice, any little crack, hole, and they start to grow throughout the system. Now, another issue with these basins is they have hardly any sump room at the bottom of them, meaning there's hardly any room at the bottom for debris and sediment to sit that gets into these basins. So let me go ahead and let me get the tape measure and we're gonna measure from the inside so we can see how much room there actually is. So if you bring that camera in closer, probably can see right through that hub. And we're looking at roughly an inch and a half, uh, about an inch and a half of space. That is not a whole lot of space for uh, the bottom of a sump basin. Now what's going to happen is, is that debris builds up in that sump basin. Dirt and sediment is going to wash into the beginning of the line right here and it's going to fill the line. And over time, that's going to create a clog or it's going to make your system function slower. And it's going to have to be cleaned out every three to six months to make sure that the system stays functioning and that it doesn't travel further down the line. All right, so now would I use these basins 
Probably not. There's a lot better options on the market that you can use instead of these particular basins. Now, if you do decide to use these basins, make sure you tile tape up the joint where the pipe connects into them because that is very important. And also, depending on where you're going to put them, that is also going to make a huge difference. If you put these in grass with sod growing around them, that is a lot better than putting them in, say, an area that has a lot of dirt or patchy grass where the dirt and soil can get into them a lot easier. Or if you put them in an area such as a mulch bed, something like that, areas where things are less likely to enter the basin so as to keep the water flowing. Now, I will say this, these basins, if you put them in concrete, like let's say you're gonna pour a concrete slab and you're gonna have these basins, I would say that would probably be the best ideal place for these basins is below concrete. That way they're not taking in a lot of sediment and dirt because there's concrete around them. They're mainly only taking water in. So that is my thoughts on these basins. Now let's go ahead and let's see some better options that you can use instead of using these speedy catch basins. All right, so if you wanna build a better inline catch basin, the best way to do it is to use an SDR 35 cross fitting. Now, these cross fittings, you can't get them at the big box store. You have to either order these online or you can find them at a plumbing supply store in your local area possibly. So the way you build these is you use a SDR 35 cap, then you cut a stub out and you can make these whatever size you want. You cut a piece of SDR pipe, and you can make them as long as you want, that sump basin. Then you solvent weld them together, you put your cap, and then you have your sump area in the bottom. Now, the top is gonna fit a four inch circle drain grate, but you're probably gonna have to use a riser here because obviously this isn't very deep. So for your riser, you can just use a SDR 35 cup link, same exact thing. You cut a piece of pipe, however deep you need to go is how much you're going to cut on your pipe. And then that is going to accept your four inch circle drain crate. So let's say we are this deep in the ground, not a big deal. We use this as our stub out, as our riser, put your coupling on top, put your grate. All right, so you might think that this basin will accept more water quicker than this smaller four inch basin, but I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. What determines how much water these basins will accept is going to be the discharge pipe. They're both four inch discharge pipes, so they will both accept the same amount of water as equally as fast. This basin will get filled up on a heavy rainstorm no different than this basin. What makes the difference is the size pipe that is coming out of the discharge end because that is what is discharging the water. So this will take the same amount of water that this will take as long as they're both four inch pipes. Now, let's say this, for some reason, this got reduced to a two inch pipe coming out. Now, and this was a four inch pipe coming out. This is gonna take a lot less water, a lot slower than this because this is a four inch pipe and this for some reason got reduced down to a two inch pipe. Obviously we wouldn't do that. I'm just saying for example purposes to try to explain my point. The size of the basin doesn't matter. What matters is the size of the discharge pipe coming out. If this remained a four inch pipe and this was a six inch pipe and this opening here got turned into a six inch, this is going to accept more water quicker than this because the pipe, the discharge pipe is larger. So that is how the discharges and how much water these can accept, that's how that works. All right, so let's say that you want a six inch size basin. You want the whole thing to be six inch and you want a four inch pipe to exit it, but you don't wanna use a speedy basin. I would suggest you get an SDR 35 six by six by four fitting, a T if you're going to start your run. This right here will allow you to essentially make a amped up version of this on steroids. So you're gonna use a six inch cap, same concept. You're going to cut 
a piece of SDR 35 six inch pipe to add as your stub. And you can make this however deep you want it to go. That's going to fit on there. Now you have your sump, your lid, or grate is going to go on the top. And then your four inch discharge pipe is going to go into here. Now, essentially what you've created is one whole piece that's going to be solvent welded together. All this plastic is going to be glued together and that's going to be solid. This is a lot better option than using this if you want to go with a six inch. All right, and if you want to start your line with a four inch basin, it's the same concept. You use a four inch T with the cap, make it as deep as you want, and then your riser is going to be a four inch cup length and you put your grate on top. Same exact concept, except it's gonna be a lot better because this whole thing is gonna be solvent welded together in your system. All right, so what I have here is a 12 by 12 circle basin. Now this is solid all the way around, so you can choose the depth or the height that you want your pipe to enter in at this basin. Now these are also called distribution boxes. So these come in handy when you have multiple lines coming in at different angles, different laterals, and you need to catch a lot of shingle gravel or debris that may be entering those lines before it gets into wherever your main discharge line is that's going to be a little bit lower in the basin. Now, like I stated before, this basin is, it's a large size basin, but this will only accept as much water as the pipe you have connected into it. So this basin is gonna accept the same amount of water as say this six by six basin here. Well, I know it's just a grate, but if it was on a basin, it's gonna accept the same amount of water depending on what size pipe you have exiting out of it. So that is how that works. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video today and my take on catch basins. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It supports the channel. And until that next video, this is Arrow GS signing off.